So that's the excretory system, and that's how we maintain salt balances and hydration in our body. But how do we build new structures? How do we grow? How do we provide the compounds that we need to break down to maintain our metabolisms and get ATP? Remember, we're not photosynthetic organisms. We're not autotrophic. We're heterotrophs. So we have to get our energy through things we eat and consume. Well, that process all happens within the digestive system. The digestive system has a lot of different subcomponents, many of which you're probably very familiar with. But there's also some stages in this that links up to things that we've learned about already in this class. Physical and chemical digestion begin in the mouth or the oral cavity, and that's where mastication occurs, or like the chewing of your food. That chewing is, is facilitated by teeth, uh, but there's also some other things that happen. We have some, some kinds of enzymes that are released in our saliva, and those start to break down food and buffer the pH. One home experiment that you can do is to rinse your mouth out with some water and then chew on like something simple, just like the most simple starchy cracker that you can find, and chew on it and then pay close attention to the sense of flavor of sweetness. Oftentimes, after you're chewing on it for a moment, you'll start to taste sweetness. Much of that is from an enzyme called amylase, which begins a process of converting starches into a disaccharide called maltose, and that maltose is what tastes sweet. Another enzyme called lipase is produced by cells in the tongue to break down fats. Remember, these are things that we looked at in our enzyme lab. A lot of the digestion of protein occurs in the stomach. And many of you have asked, where do these compounds come from when we're, looking at the, uh, when we're looking at the flow from gene to protein, right? We're looking at how different polypeptide chains were constructed. And like one question was like, where did those, where did those amino acids come from? When we're building a polypeptide chain, and then you create this like amino acid, you know, you create a protein. Like where do those subcomponents come from? What, what, how, where does the tRNA get those little amino acids, well, that has to be broken down from proteins that you eat. That process largely begins in the stomach. The stomach is a, a sac-like organ, and it secretes a lot of digestive juices. It also secretes a lot of different enzymes. Remember, enzymes are proteins that act to facilitate reactions, maybe break things down or put things together. And one enzyme that is produced in your stomach is called pepsin. Pepsin results in the catabolism of protein in food. Your stomach also moves around and helps kind of break things up that way. And eventually, all of the things you eat create a mixture called chyme. A lot of that process in your stomach is highly acidic, but it's protected by a thick layer of mucus. That chime, that slurry, that sludge, is released into your small intestine a little bit at a time. Once the chime moves through the small intestine, that's where a lot of the digestion of proteins and fats and carbohydrates occurs. The small intestine is a long tube-like organ with really highly folded surfaces, and it contains these finger-like projections called villi. This kind of helps increase the surface area, the, the amount of area in which the edges of that small intestine can interact with the material and absorb. Chyme is mixed with pancreatic juices, which is an alkaline solution that's rich in bicarbonate, and it neutralizes the acidity of the chyme from the stomach. Remember, your stomach needed a lot of mucus to protect itself. Well, now the acidity of that material has been neutralized. Pancreatic juices also contain digestive enzymes that break down starches, disaccharides, proteins, and fats. Think about how those materials relate to the macromolecules we talked about early on in the semester. Bile is produced in the liver and stored and concentrated in the gallbladder. Bile contains bile salts. Bile salts make lipids accessible to water-soluble enzymes, and they're very important in digestion. After material passes through the small intestine, it then enters the large intestine. And the large intestine is really important in the absorption of water. 
it helps maintain hydration in the body and make sure that we don't lose a lot of water in the digestive process. The colon is home to a lot of different microbiota. And so a lot of the time when we're talking about microbiomes, people talk about microbiomes in the context of gut health. And when we're talking about gut health, what we're really talking about is largely this, uh, this microbiome that occurs in your large intestine. And so we still don't quite understand the full consequences of these microbiomes and how they work, uh, but we are starting to understand that they're very important to human health and to the, the maintenance and homeostatic processes of the organism. There's also a lot of what we call accessory organs, and those are things that work to add different kinds of enzymes or different kinds of secretions that help break down or help facilitate the process of digestion. Those are things like the gallbladder and the liver and the pancreas. The liver has a, a big role in the digestion of fats and detoxifying blood. The liver is where bile is produced and remember, bile helps break down fats. It also absorbs vitamins and fatty acids and synthesizes many plasma proteins. The gallbladder is a small organ that stores bile and concentrates bile salts. Remember, bile is really important in the digestion of lipids, whereas proteins are largely digested in the stomach. The pancreas secretes bicarbonate, and that's what neutralizes the acidity of the chyme when it leaves the stomach. Now looking at this chart, we can see where food passes and then also what accessory organs are and differentiate between those things. So we know that the stomach is the first place that food enters, and that's where a lot of proteins are digested. That's also a very acidic environment. The stomach is protected by mucus. And that's where chyme is produced, which is that kind of slurry, that sludge, which is then slowly released into the small intestine. The small intestine is that large network of folded up tube-like structures in the center. And that's where a lot of the absorption and the breakdown of carbohydrates and lipids and proteins occurs. It's also where pancreatic juice has been introduced and the acidity is reduced. It's, it's become more, uh, more alkaline at that point. And so it's a less acidic mixture. Finally, that material is moved into the large intestine where water is absorbed. You can see the large intestine here is green and that material is, is dehydrated and moved towards the rectum where finally it's passed to the anus.